we are in the uh, mountains in central western Pennsylvania and it is April 19th just 11 days until we can launch this boat for this 30th season looks like it's all ready to go welcome to my little YouTube studio and canvas work area in this work area I have an industrial size sewing machine that came out of a local sewing factory. This machine is old, but replacement parts are available and very inexpensive. This machine may have sewed something in the line of Arnold Palmer of clothing sold at the Sears and Roebuck in the uh, 70s and 80s. Arnold is now gone. Sears is almost gone. The local sewing factory is gone, but this machine is still running stronger than my sewing skills. My mother and an older sister were both professional seamstresses. So I grew up around sewing machines. In the 70s, I attended an evening adult upholstering class at the local Votech school to make chairs, curtains, and a sofa for a custom van that I was building at the time. So I have made lots of canvas projects for my Catalina 22 that will be upcoming in a future video. But for right now, I'm working on a mainsail which will be my second one this winter. Special note, I only sew for family and sailing friends. So please do not contact me about doing a project for you. I will only help you with questions using some form of the internet. My industrial size sewing machine. This model is a uh, low end. It has no reverse and no zigzag stitch strictly forward but it has enough power to basically sew marine canvas to a brick has a table with all the added features of a bobbin threader a knee adjuster that will adjust the foot with your knee parts are relatively inexpensive i've added a uh, thread oiler that is loaded with uh, silicone oil and the thread slides through it as a lubrication for heavy material sewing, such as the project I'm working on right now. We have another mainsail repair. These sails I'm repairing are very old and are on their last legs, so hopefully I can get a couple more seasons for the owners. This rope is pulled by the uh, halyard, help shape the sailcloth to create de great depth for light winds and stretch tight for a flat sail in high winds. This rope is supposed to go all the way to the top of the sail's head and is then by hand with heavy twine sewn to the head. When we look at the sailcloth next to this headboard, we can see where the cloth has large tear outs that were torn into it by this heavy twine sewing this rope next to the headboard. This boat rope repair may fix the leeches problem that I witnessed last season. And I had to replace the bolt rope that extends the whole height of the sail. And the boat rope comes already sewed into the sail cloth that's cut to the right shape. It happened to be an exact replacement that fit exactly in the same spot. I added a double-sided uh, basting tape to each side of the sail cloth and when it was applied, uh, it would stick. So this uh, bolt rope is glued to the sail material as well as stitched on the sewing machine. So I'm in the process of now hand stitching with heavy thread and a very large needle stitching this rope to the uh, sail cloth so that the rope cannot be pulled from the head. 
so that when you pull on the halyard, it can stretch the rope and the sail cloth for different wind conditions to help shape the sail for better performance. This twine is soaked in wax to make it slide easier. But the twist in the twine allows it to spin and create knots. So I have to work it very slowly with both hands to keep the knots from forming between the stitches until I get it all the way pulled in and then I can pull it tight. I am now coming back with the same piece of thread or twine and it's in the same style that the original manufacturer had made this that I figured out and it created a nice cross stitching coming back uh, starting point to seal this rope into this sailcloth material. As I said before, with the halyard pulling this way, this material from here down is allowed to stretch. This holds this all in place to where it's pulled and stretched. So this goes the whole way to the bottom foot of the sail, 25 feet. Here's the mainsail stretched out in my garage. New bolt rope that I put on there. And there looks like a, a sag in the bolt rope. But I think that is because it's brand new sailcloth and it needs to be stretched out a little longer. I'm not 100% sure, but won't know until we put it up the mast and stretch it with the halyard to see if that wrinkle comes out. If not, that will fill with the wind. But when we look over at the, the leech, we can see that it doesn't have a nice curvature to it. It seems to be falling off towards the floor. It's not rounded up like the luff is. If we can look dead center, we can see that the belly in the sail is just a little bit beyond the 50% mark, dead center. From the foot clear to the head should be the deepest part of the sail that we can see that it's closer to the uh, luff which means that the leech is falling off and the leech has been stretched out so it looks like we need to put some uh, additional broad seams in it if we look at this seam we can see that it's wider here than it is three or four feet into the sail and that's what they call broad seaming by giving a little bit of depth in the sail. So it looks like I need to add, take that apart, do the overlap more, maybe a half inch more. As I've marked the top edge with a piece of tape, you can see it over here, of how far I want to go. And I've drawn a line right here to bring this seam over to here. So we're going to take a half inch out of this uh, edge and we're going to take a half inch out of this edge that runs up to the end of the stick there and then there's two more up at the head of the sail so we're going to be taking two two inches out of the leech of this sail and uh, we're going to see what happens I have the uh, seams in the leech all ripped apart placed mastic stitching tape 
Fortunately, the sale was not, adhesion tape was used before they sewed it together from the factory. So this made this easier and I didn't have to worry about the glue problem. So now all I have to do is release this uh, covering on this double faced tape and stick this together. But then this sail is off a 28 foot boat, which is three times heavier than a Catalina 22. So uh, the uh, stresses on this sail has to be three to four times greater. Here's the third time that I have stretched the sail out in the garage to see if we can get some cupping to that uh, leech. And you can see the center of the uh, sail, curvature of the sail should be. We can control that with our boom pressure and our main sheet line by pulling down on the boom and stretching out this leech to take the excessive amount out of there. I wanted to show you, I've talked about the leech line. You can see here that there is a string attached. And then when I pull that, it will take that leech and actually curve it in more. See that? That string runs through the folded edge where the hem that was put in the leech of the sail where they cut it extra long and then folded it over, fold it over again, over top itself, and sewed this string in there so that it will, can pull it. Now clear up at the head, the string is sewed to the very top of the sail, just like the bolt rope. Now the bolt rope, we can use a halyard to stretch it tight, but the very uh, uh, edge of the leech, where all the wind has to pass across from there, clear to here, will act like a flag and start to flutter. And where the end of this sail out, a flag does. When you ever see a flag, the, the total end of the flag is where all the wear starts. But by using this leech line, we can pull this tight and take some of that flutter out of there. Now we have a reefing grommet right here to reef the sail down, to pull it down to the boom. And we have a cleat, a little plastic cleat that takes that leech line and lock it in place right here for when it's uh, reefed. When it's not reefed, then this is released and we have the full sail, then we have a small cleat right here that we pull it and stretch it tight and then lock it in place. This unit is shot, so I'm going to replace it with a, a new one in the same location. String is sewed on either side so that there's a channel, the outside edge of the sail or the leech for a pocket for that string to pull through. I have the leech uh, glued together. No sewing has been done yet, but I can still see that it's still falling off just a little bit. So I can pull that material apart at the seams and overlap it just a little bit more to give that better shape. Not filmed was the making of new sail emblems. The original manufactured ones just fell off the sail as I was handling it. This mainsail is off a Solvern 28 center cockpit and cutter rigged. Because it's only 8 foot 4 inches wide, it can be legally towed. This is the repaired sail full of wind. It looks way much better than the last time I saw this sail under power. None of the telltales would fly because the leech was blown out. Lessons learned. I should have stretched out the original bolt rope covered with new sailcloth and hand stitched it to the head of the sail. Would have saved the expense of a new rope and the work of removing the sail slug grommets and attaching new ones.